Coca-Cola, the most famous drink known to every person on earth. Even if you did not drink it, you saw it. In movies, in TV shows, in games and so on. Every Slavic New Year's holiday is accompanied by a commercial with red trucks and of course with Santa Claus or Dead Maros, the appearance of which was also invented by the Coca-Cola company, the world's best remedy for dissolving rust, lime scale and teeth. It's like WD-40, except you can also drink coke. No, of course everyone has different tastes. Uh, Does not taste good. And of course, as you can already guess, in the SSSR, cola, just like McDonald's, was also a symbol of freedom. In general, in the SSSR, everything American was a symbol of freedom. Like gum, for example, which in shortage times was chewed by several people at once. I mean, the same piece. You just dip that piece in the jam to refresh the flavor and uh, that deserves its own video. <laughs> so hit the like button, write mmm coke in the comments and today we will find out how coke appeared in the SSSR, how it has disappeared now and how the party is trying to replace it. As you have already realized, the SSSR had a special relationship with this drink. Coke was considered a terrible imperialist drink there, of course. No one should drink it. Today you want some soda, and tomorrow you'll start wanting a celery. No, no, no. But still, the desire was too high. Coke, I hope I'm pronouncing that word right, first appeared in the Union in 1946. But no one knew about it at all. There is an urban legend that once, during World War II, Soviet Marshal Zhukov met with Eisenhower. And Eisenhower at the meeting treated Zhukov to his favorite drink. Coke, which was served to American soldiers at the time. Zhukov really liked it. Really? Like, really, blood. And he asked an American colleague to make him a personal coke in secret, colorless and with no labels, so no one would know. Because coke was regarded as the symbol of American imperialism, and drinking it was regarded as worshipping Americans. And for that in those days, well, you know. And to completely remove suspicion, it was desirable to pour the soda into vodka bottles with the star. Because vodka was okay to drink on the job. It is okay. Because vodka was okay to drink, and Soviet soldiers were also supplied with vodka, and only Western spies drink water. And Coca-Cola made a personal variety just for Zhukov, only 50 crates called White Coke. So now you know the rarest kind of cola in the world. Unfortunately, you can't get one of these in your collection. Because apparently Zhukov drank it all. Then for years only the top officials drank Pepsi and Coke without sharing it with anyone. Ho ho ho, you don't have it. Nom, 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 nom. Well, only once. In 59, Pepsi performed in Moscow at the American Achievement Expo. That was the first time ordinary citizens could try the drink. And the newspaper said no one liked it because the drink smelled like gasoline, tasted like shoe polish and was a horrible crap that Soviet citizens did not need. Mm -hmm. And Khrushchev did not even know what he was drinking with Nixon and Pepsi CEO in front of the cameras. Like what? Is it written here? Eh? But it was too late. Coke was beginning to dissolve the rusty iron curtain. The first shipments of the drink went to the Union. Поведай, где источник твой? О, восхитительный тиран, здесь тайны нет. Напиток тот, что силы мне дарил перед тобой. But the Union had no money. Money is evil. So Minister Kasugin suggested exchanging Pepsi for what the Union had. Yes, for vodka. Stalichne. At the rate of a bottle for a bottle. 
Нет! Столичная! Да? Then, in 1974, the USSR stopped showing off and finally agreed to produce Pepsi officially for everyone at the beer factory in Novorossiysk, but still in confidence. To make sure no one would figure out it was an American drink, the name was written in Cyrillic. Coke has become very popular and it's surprising, but everyone figured it out. And people began to think that good times were coming and that the government had become sane. So by 1976, to set aside such strange thoughts of the population, the government said, we're just as good, we're even better, we don't like that crap, we will make this bubbly water ourselves. Actually, we already make it ourselves. Whatever! Ah, I order you to make our own coke and make it smell like Siberia and vodka! Execute! After that, the government stole the recipe for coke from itself in Novorossiysk. They added lemon, fur oil, licorice, alcohol and the bay leaf. And called the new drink Baikal. Целебный, приятно освежающий напиток Байкал. Попробуйте. And of course, made the recipe a secret, so it's not to be stolen by Western Spice. People said, yeah, sure, we're already drinking vodka with a bay leaf, we want Coca-Cola. And by the time of the Olympics 80, Coke and Fanta had become the official drinks of those Olympics. But you could only buy it in Moscow, Tallinn and Kyiv. And the residents of the other cities, vodka with a bay leaf. By the way, that's where Soviet citizens saw disposable cups for the first time in their lives. Some even kept them as a souvenir in the closet or in the garage for random stuff. The Olympics passed. And six years later, Coke began to be sold officially everywhere. The United Soviet something, right, still had no money and they had to pay for the concentrate and then Coca-Cola agreed to exchange the drink for Lada cars for a sale in the… ok. New cars had to be repaired. <laughs> New cars had to be repaired before they were sold so they wouldn't fall apart on the road. But now the company has succeeded in capturing the market. 30 years ago, we made history. The UK got its sufferings because of the Soviet cars. Oh my god, there's no key. Moscow got its first advertising sign for anything other than vodka in the Soviet Union. Now in the USSR there was coke in exchange for scrap metal and Pepsi in exchange for vodka. But a problem happened. Vodka ran out. The Union began to offer champagne and brandy, but even that was not enough. And then the greatest deal of the century took place. The Soviet government exchanged Pepsi for the Navy. 17 submarines, a destroyer, a cruiser and a torpedo boat. Consequently, Pepsi became the sixth largest military in the world. Among the countries. How about this headline? Last week Pepsi finally took over the market in the country and the country itself. The provisional government is headed by the Pepsi man. Neighboring countries bought Mentos just in case. Though it did not last long. The ships were sold to Sweden as scrap metal. Caffeinated and shipless, the Iron Curtain happily dissolved. There appeared business and all the other brands arrived. Vimto, Crush, Iron Brew, Hershey with a kid who looks like a local punk idol. Hershey Cola, Goods, Победы. Even Dr. Pepper came into the country in 96, but disappeared right away. Something went wrong with the brand rights. The country was literally flooded with soda. It was the main sponsor of all the shows. It was raffled off as prizes. Soda! 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 The older generation was unhappy about the innovation. After all, it's got dye in it and sugar and it's American. And young people immediately fell in love with this beverage. 
After all, it's got dye in it and sugar and it's American. That is why every family feast is accompanied by an endless complaint. You're drinking it again and drinking and drinking. It's not good for you. The stomach will fall out. Teeth will fall out. Your eyesight will go bad. Karma will be ruined. Nose hair will grow out of your ears. Better drink vodka. But Coca-Cola company drinks have become the most popular and it, along with Pepsi, quickly became a monopolist. That's why parody local copies started to appear. In case someone's eyesight is bad, for example, hundreds, thousands of them. Street, Fantastic, Schweppes, Fontana, Orange, Lemon, Fun Fun, Chuda Chudne, Comi Cola. <laughs> And finally, just shh. They all look like they're for movies or games that want to spoof the drink, and of course no one was buying them. For the last 20 years, Coke and Pepsi have been produced for Slavs in only two flavors – regular and diet. I don't know why, but the companies have stubbornly refused to make anything else, but a couple of years ago Pepsi released a new flavor. Everybody loved it. Coke said, hey, what are you doing, blyat? And the company started competing violently. Vanilla, lemon, lime, cherry, energy, orange, mango, raspberry, mint, Soviet version. And they're all diet. In short, the shelves began to look like there was a market here. And again, people began to think that good times were coming and that the government had become sane. And at that moment, that one old man has decided to turn on the country's self-destruct mode. In boundaries he still remembers. Must crush capitalism. Coca-Cola and Pepsi grabbed their navy and sailed away, and the party gave the order to make an Alex for the disappeared drinks. Like a hundred more. Yes, they already have Baikal, Kvas, which is absolutely not Cola. Kvas Nikola. Patamuchta on Nikola. Komi Cola, Schweppes, and Shhh. It's all there and no one needs it, but Shhh. And that means it's time for us to buy up all these new clones to try them and see if finally the party in 70 years had been able to make at least one drink that looks like a real coke. It's going to be very soon, so stay tuned. And that's all for today. My name is Mark. Subscribe, comment, like and see you next time, blyat!